is TPLA Knight, Jeff Macklin here, and today we're going to discuss some differences in uh, what I like to call piecemeal armor, or um, you know, traditional, uh, traditionally HEMA armor, um, what a lot of people are using as HEMA armor, and traditional Kendo armor, or what's called Bogu. Um, so to give you a little background, I've studied Kenjutsu since 1998, and back then there was not a lot of options for other kinds of armor. You basically had kendo armor or that was it. Um, some of the hockey gear back then was all right but the gaps in the helmet were a little too big and the face shields that were clear fogged up real easy. So we didn't have a lot of options and recently since the HEMA community has been growing uh, there's been a lot more stuff come out that, that is highly highly acceptable for um, especially what we do combat with the lightsaber blades. Um, versus just the traditional bogu that, that, that's all that used to be there. So we'll start uh, from the top down, and, and to give you an idea just about how armor works, a lot of you guys probably know this, but this is just a basic overview. The more articulations or hinges that armor has, the more susceptible you are to injury, but the less you can move in it. So uh, you'll see the differences in this gear versus what I tr I've moved on to from the bogu. Um, when we start looking at it. The BOGU is very acceptable by TPLA standards uh, unless, unless you're doing multiple opponents. Uh, and again, you'll see that in a minute. BOGU is open in the back. Uh, there's very little protection in the back, if any at all. So we don't really endorse a lot of uh, multiple partner sparring with the BOGU just because there's no rear protection. All the stuff from, from the HEMA gear has protection in the rear. So. Um, you can actually use that with multiple people. Uh, so again, let's start with the top. We'll go, uh, we'll go with the headgear. This is a traditional um, Bogu helmet called a men. And it's tied on, as you can see, with these long straps called Hemo. And so it's very time consuming to get on and off, for one. Um, and two, if your cord breaks, you can't tie your helmet on. So this is a traditional kendo mask. As you can see, the back is completely open. Um, it does cover, or if it fits appropriately, it should cover all the way to the back of the head. But the problems with this is it's very hot. It's not very breathable. It cuts off a lot of your peripheral vision. As you can see, the mask, the face sits far back in the mask, so you don't get a lot of peripheral vision in this. Uh, it's also, the sides look armored, but they're really soft. So this is just very thick material. It's not actual armor. So if you get caught in the ear, you'll know it. Um, ask me how I know. Uh, the thing it does have that the HEMA masks lack at this point is very good throat protection. This is very solid, even though it is just material. With the shenais and even with the polycarbonate blades we use, you can't get through this and hurt the throat. Um, the other problem with this is this is your shoulder protection as you wear this mask these sit on your shoulders so if you turn your head at all you lose all shoulder protection it's gone it's now in front of you hanging out and saying hi to your opponent um, so again good gear but it kind of locks you into a very static forward facing stance um, now we'll look at uh, traditional fencing mask now this is the fencing mask that, that you know, you'll see in, in fencing, and this one's actually rated for all three fencing styles, uh, rapier, foil, um, it's rapier, foil, epee, and saber. It's rated for all of them. Uh, as you can see, this is metal. Uh, it's mesh. It provides a lot wider, a much wider view of your combat. Um, again, it's open in the back, but this piece here is metal, so you can actually bend it. So there is some protection in the back, but not much. This on the sides is, is complete metal mesh. So if you get hit on the ear here, it'll just sound really loud. It's not going to hurt you. Um, again, no throat protection whatsoever with regards to thrusting. So you have to be very careful with, uh, with the fencing masks in that, in that sense. But it's real quick to get on and off. So you get real hot after a real good sparring session, you just yank it off, it's not a big deal. Uh, this one in particular has something you can, you can pull this out with Velcro and wash it. So uh, I like to use it for my students because one person uses it, I pull it out and we wash it, it's not a big deal. Um, now, what I'll show you next is what I've gone to. This is the, uh, the Absolute Force HEMA helmet. Now all it is is a fencing mask 
with this very thick hood on top of it. Um, now this hood comes all the way down to the mid shoulder blades. Um, it looks like just material, but there's actually a, a very thick piece of leather on the inside of this. So it's very, very protective. This protects the side of the neck, but there's no hard leather in here. And again, no throw protection on this mask. Uh, it does dull a lot of the blows that come in on this metal. So if you're using steel, these masks are really nice. You don't get a big ring in your head after, after you've been hit. Um, and obviously it's paintable. Um, I did this on my own real quick one night just to play with it. Uh, so this mask I highly recommend. Again, it's absolute force. They sell the standard fencing masks just like this one. And you can buy the hood, but if you buy the hood separate, it costs the same as, if you buy the mask and the hood separate, it costs the same as just this mask. So I just went ahead and bought the big one. Um, so moving down on the body, we're going to go ahead and look at the, the armor I use for shoulder gear. And this is a set of lacrosse pads. Um, these are very protective. Again, you can see the back end is protected, so your shoulder blades and spine are protected. Uh, there's, there's no issues with regards to this articulating. It bends very easily. Uh, there's no problems at all with it. I would not use this with steel, or I would be very cautious to do so. I would definitely wear more than this if I was using something else. But for what we do with the polycarbonate blades, absolutely acceptable. It lets you lift your arms up. There's no problems. Again, if you've watched any kind of lacrosse, you'll see these guys moving, and they're really not restricted. This is what they're wearing. Also, lacrosse is a game where you have a stick with a ball and you use a stick to try and hit your other opponents to drop the ball. So this gear is pretty much made for being hit with sticks. Um, I have no complaints with this. If you have a played against sports in your area, these things are usually really cheap. I think I picked mine up for 20 bucks. So really good protection, um, really easy to use. Now, as you can see, this, uh, this gear will only protect to about the bottom of the rib cage. This is the bottom of my uh, sternum right here. So what they, what they have to kind of uh, go along with this is a rib protector. And what this is, is you wear it like a backpack. And this fills in that slot underneath for the kidneys and the abdomen. Now, the problem I have with this one, and I've, I've looked into some others, but I haven't purchased any yet, is it does leave a gap in the front. Even if I tighten these down all the way, I've got about an inch gap in the front. So you are susceptible to thrusts in the front with this type of gear. <clears throat> but I highly recommend this if you're doing any kind of sparring where people are, are swinging horizontally, coming into the sides with the, in the floating ribs of the kidneys. Um, and to compare, this is your Bogu um, chest piece. And obviously there's no articulations in it. That's as much as it bends. So there's a little bit of flex when you put it on. It fits here, you are open. And now with the Bogu gear, your chest or your neck piece will come right down to the chest piece here. So you're protected in this area. When you put the, if you try and wear this with the, with the fencing masks, you're completely unprotected from the top of the sternum to your chin. Um, you know, it does protect the sides very well. It should come to the back, but you're completely open in the back. You have no protection whatsoever back there with, with this gear. So uh, also, it, if I try to lean forward in this, I'm restricted at this point. So there's very little I can do in, in low striking or in low movements without being restricted by this gear. It's also much heavier. Uh, this is weighing in at about two and a half pounds, uh, maybe even more. But, um, and again, just like the, the men, the helmet, it is tied on. So it takes a little more time to put on than just strap it on with Velcro. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's wor it works, it will protect you, but it's not as versatile as the lacrosse gear. Uh, moving on to arms and hands, um, we'll look at the lacrosse gear first. This is a lacrosse arm protector that slides up onto the arm like this, and it has three articulation points, or two articulation points rather, and three shells that you can actually, you know, see. It provides me no restriction whatsoever in movement. Um, paired with the glove that you put on, protects all the way up the arm. So you have no issues. Uh, now, the comparison glove, the kendo glove here, or the kote, it is easy to get on, 
but I am locked into a G.I. Joe type pincer grip. Uh, also, if you look, it forces your wrist into a broken forward position because that's how you hold a sword in a traditional chudon or middle guard stance in kenjutsu. So it does protect up to the elbow. Uh, there's no protection in kendo armor from the uh, end of the kote up to the side of the men. So you have no upper arm protection in, in kendo gear, uh, which again is, is slightly disconcerting, but um, they're not technically targets uh, in, in the legal, in the tournament setting. Now let's compare this to the lacrosse glove. Obviously, I'm not broken in a forward grip. I can get into that grip if I want, but I'm not forced there. I can tell you hello with all five fingers, or, or four fingers, one thumb, however you choose. And that thumb is actually movable. Uh, a lot of hockey pads look a lot uh, very similar, but this thumb is rigid because in hockey you're holding that thumb on top of the stick, and if someone smacks on the back of it, it's going to get damaged very easily. So. Lacrosse gear does have the, articulate, the articulating thumb in their gear. Um, I've taken the string out of this. You don't really need it wrapped tight here, especially if you're wearing the other gear. I've never been tagged on the inside of my wrist with wearing these gloves. And now the precautions I'll give you with, uh, with regards to this glove is, as you can see, when I bend my fingers, it opens up these gaps. Now with steel, a steel weapon can get in there. Uh, one of our lightsabers cannot. Um, the shinais that I use for kenjutsu cannot get in there. Uh, there's no, um, there's no, none of the weapons we use for, with our stuff will actually get into these grooves. The other problem is as you lengthen, there's no padding coming across the front of these gloves. This is complete, my finger, it's just my finger and just fabric. So you've got to be careful occasionally holding those sabers, especially against the aluminum. You can get a smashed fingertip every once in a while. So um, you've got to be careful with this. Uh, there's other lacrosse gloves that kind of have a scalloped armor on the back um, that do slide and articulate, which leaves no openings whatsoever on the back. There's a set of gloves out by um, Red Dragon right now, and they are HEMA gloves based off lacrosse gloves, and they use that, art, that scalloped armor on the back of the fingers, and the armor actually comes over the front of the fingers, so your fingertips are protected in those gloves. I have yet to get my hands on one, but I think some of us in TPLA actually have some, so we'll, we'll keep you guys updated with those as we test them out. So the last thing, piece of protection we'll look at is uh, the tare, or the kind of a battle skirt. Um, there, I do not have a HEMA version of this. Uh, the HEMA version, uh, we've, I know that uh, Darth Anonymous has been playing with it, and he's not very happy with the one that he's got. So we haven't really found one yet that we, we'd like to, uh, to look at or say, man, this is a great one. This works, especially if you're wearing your athletic protection uh, underneath, um, your athletic supporter. But again, there's no protection to the rear. So um, of all the places I am least concerned about, I can take a shot to the glutes but I don't really want to. So it does, it does still require some caution with regards to using this, but, um, but it still has done everything I've needed it to do so far. Uh, and it, depending on where you tie it, you can tie it a little higher and actually get some kidney protection from this. Um, some people are more comfortable wearing it lower. Uh, depending on your height, I have a shorter torso, so it actually helps me to do that. So, um, so that's all the gear that I have to talk about. Uh, again, this is not the only gear you're allowed to use in TPLA. These are just examples of it. Um, anything like this gear is most likely going to be approved. Uh, and if you have any questions, comments, concerns, throw them our way. If you find better gear or you know of some other stuff, let us know. We are open to finding better gear. Um, again, all this stuff is growing, and as this stuff comes out, you're going to see a lot more stuff, uh, a lot more gear come into this, uh, into this field. So again, any questions, comments, concerns, throw them our way. Thank you for watching, and happy sabering.